Welcome to Hoffman's Hunting Heritage. From the Great Lakes to the Harland, from the mountains to the sea, there's a hunting heritage in the blood of folks like you and me. With rut bucks and goblin struts, it's hunting that we love. Mother Nature guides us on this land and we give thanks up above. This hunting heritage is a bond that never fades away. We're your camo wearing family from across the USA. So fill your cup and listen up, y'all mean so much to me. It's time for the show, so go grab your bow. This is a wild place to be. Hello and welcome back to a new episode of Hoffman's Hunting Heritage. I'm your host, Bill Hoffman, and this week's show is all about my 2020 outdoors resolutions. It's a brand new year. We got a lot to look forward to. We got a lot going on in 2020, and I just wanted to kind of sit down, lay out my year a little bit for you guys, but kind of actually for myself, just to kind of actually run a stream of consciousness about what I have planned for this year and what I'm looking forward to, what my goals are, what my resolutions are. And uh, first of all, I'm going to uh, just be straight up front with you guys. I have a cold. I'm almost over it. I'm feeling better, but you may notice a little bit of difference in my voice. I apologize for that, but we got to you know, got to make hay while the sun is shining, right? So here we are. We are a couple days away from the ATA Archery Trade Association show here in Indianapolis, which I'll be traveling to. So that's the first thing on my 2020 what's coming up resolutions list is I'm going to ATA. Of course, last week you guys heard me talk all about it. By the time you listen to this, I'll actually be at the show. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, or I'll I actually have already been at the show, I guess, for a few days. But either way, I'm not really sure when I'm going to release these. But uh, that's going to be an eye-opener for me. I feel like I'm I'm going to make a lot of good contacts. I'm going to get a lot of people booked to come on as guests to this show. And um, I'm just, I I think it's going to be a big deal for me as far as, you know, the podcast goes and as far as my career goes in the outdoors industry. So, um that's the first thing right up front I'm looking forward to in 2020. The uh, the next thing is I am going to get the wheeled bow back out a little bit here. I'm going to get the compound back out. And um, I, you know me. I like bows. I like shooting them all. I, I'm not anti anything, right? I'm not even anti crossbow. I don't use one. I don't think you need to use one. But I'm not against you using one, I guess, is the way I look at it, right? So I'm not anti-anything, really, in the outdoors. However, I enjoy shooting stuff. And I'm not going to stop myself from enjoying, from doing something that I enjoy just because it's, quote-unquote, easier. Because it's not. It's different. And, and if you're shooting... 20 yards with a longbow versus 20 yards with a reeker or with a compound and it's all dialed in. Yeah. One's easier than the other. I get that. But the reason I'm going to start shooting the compound more is I really enjoy shooting competitively. And what I, what I mean by competitively is I enjoy shooting like the 3d shoots and the 3d circuit and the tournaments like the IAA and IBO and ASA. And while you can take a trad bow to those events and they do have traditional classes, the level of competition is different. Um, and I think that's a benefit to the trad bow community. And what I mean by that is when I go to an IAA shoot and I'm a trad and I'm a, I'm going as a trad bow guy that, um, the trad bow guys are all friends and it's not, there's, there's not, 
the the sense of pressure is not there. It's not about what you shoot or what your score is. It's just about, hey, we're out here shooting today. It's a beautiful day. And oh, by the way, we happen to be keeping score. There's nothing wrong with that. And I do enjoy that. And I'll probably flip back and forth a lot. However, I did miss this last summer. I didn't pick up the compound at all this summer, this last summer. And I, I did miss the pressure of um, scoring, the pressure of hitting a very small spot, the uh, accuracy and the repetitiveness that it takes in order to perform at a high level with a compound. Now, again, we're talking about target shooting, not necessarily hunting, okay? Target shooting. So, um, yeah, that, that's one of my resolutions is to shoot the compound more. Uh, that doesn't mean that you know, come October or even into turkey season, that that's the weapon that's going to be in my hand. Uh, that, that That's not really what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is more so just getting more so getting into more of the competitive shooting. But um, so we talked about um, that. So all through the winter, I'm, I'm probably like indoor season, stuff like that. I'm going to be shooting the compound. Um, but as soon as winter ends, uh, spring shows up and spring brings us to turkey hunting. This year, I am really looking forward to turkey hunting. I've got like three brand new properties, one of which is friggin' loaded with turkeys. And um, it, it's going to be a great season. I am guiding this year for turkey hunts. Um, you can't hire me to guide you. I have, have donated some hunts to um, different charities and whatnot. Um and I, I will be taking those people on the guided hunt. So I'm not, not necessarily like taking clients or, you know, getting money. I'm just taking people hunting that donated for me to take them hunting, which I think is going to be really cool. Um, a lot of fun. Did the same type of thing last year as well. Um, but turkey hunting this year, the one thing I'm looking forward to more so with turkey hunt is wearing the hex suit and, um, really, um, digging into that more in trying to, you know, be more run and gun and hunt without a blind and utilizing the science behind the hex suit um, to see exactly how close I can get the uh, the birds to come in. So, again, last year, guys, you've seen the video. I shot my turkey at four, six yards, something like that. I was in a pop-up blind, but still, I mean, I can get turkeys to come in close, but I think it'd be cool to not be in a blind at all. So I, I am really looking forward to that. and. The other thing, as far as like as we roll into spring, is is I want to do more fishing, guys. I didn't I didn't go fishing last year at all. And I grew up on a lake. Uh, my wife and I used to live on a lake. Like we need to go fishing. I, I don't even care if it's just like you know um, pan fishing, taking taking the kids out in the rowboat and the kayaks and do some pan fishing and some bass fishing. Gosh, I miss that. Uh, so much so that one of my, you know, knowing that this is going to be one of my resolutions this year is to get out and do more fishing is, uh, I specifically encourage Santa to bring my kids new fishing gear. So summer and hunter, my, my, well, they'll, by the time spring rolls around, they'll be, uh, 11 and seven. Jeez. And, uh, they're going to be perfect age for fishing. And my wife actually likes to go fishing too. So that is definitely, uh, we are going to have some um, family fishing trips planned around that. So I am doing a lot of, uh, um, traveling, uh, which is a blessing and, and a curse, you know, doing a lot of traveling, both with the family and vacations and, uh, and doing stand up, you know, stand up comedy gigs across the nation. But, um, one thing that I, that I am doing as far as traveling goes is June. I'm going black bear hunting. I'm going black bear hunting in June. We're up going up to New Brunswick, Canada, just across the border from Bangor, Maine, with my good buddy, friend of the show, Jake Hacker from Spy Point Trail Cameras. So we are going to be meeting up in Cleveland because he's coming up from uh, down around the Cincinnati area. So we're going to meet in Cleveland and from there we go steam up 15 hours or so up into the, the great wild north and we're going after some big old black bears. But the cool thing about that trip too is it's like half black bear hunting and half fishing because you fish in the morning and great, uh, um, northern pike and walleye and the small mouth and we're going to be there the first week of june so the the smallest should be on their bed now you can't keep, you can't keep them there but you, you can kind of like sight fish them which is a lot of fun but um 
I, I'm again, I'm just over the moon looking forward to that trip. He shot a very nice bear last year. We're going with uh, hunting and outfitters. I'm actually going to have them on the show before um, before too long here, just to kind of. Uh, you know, not only promote them, we're paying for our hunt. We get zero deals with this. This is not like an industry type thing. Uh, we are just, um, we, you know, Jake's been up there. He said they run a top, uh, top notch, phenomenal. They said the lodge is great and the hunting's great. So really looking forward to, uh, getting up there. And hopefully I don't have another bear attack survival story for you guys. Cause you know, <laughs> I know you guys like hearing my bear attack survival story. And if you haven't listened to that, I think it's like episode two. So you can go back and listen to the story about how I survived a bear attack when I was 14. But, uh, no, it should, it should be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm absolutely looking forward to that. And, uh, I, I get back from that trip and, you know, try, um, I'm home for a few weeks and then travel's taking me back down to, uh, Myrtle Beach to tell some jokes. But, uh, tell you what, while I'm there, I'm gonna, we're gonna go fishing. Uh, you know, deep sea fishing in the Atlantic. I've actually never gone fishing in the Atlantic. I've, uh, I've fished the Gulf and I've fished the Pacific, but I never fished the Atlantic. So I'm really looking forward to, you know, it's just gonna be a charter, you know, total tourist types thing, but it is what it is going to, uh, get out there and uh see what we can hook into and i don't know if we're even looking for food i mean if we're catching sharks and just cool shit i'm (laughs) i'm happy with that as well so you know and that kind of that kind of really wraps up my spring and then we're gonna get into summer and summer really does come into you know that that competitive uh, archery season that i was talking about uh and, and more you know the fishing and whatnot so um you know, everyone thinks about their their resolutions. And, and, you know, if you say, uh, oh, I want to lose weight or obviously I want to lose weight. <laughs> everyone always wants to lose weight, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm 5'11", 250. I could lose a few pounds here and there. But, you know, um, but the uh, the other thing I really want to do is uh, it involves my, my, my kids. And um, I really want to make a a – a conscientious conceited effort to really really get them in position to be ready for the october youth hunt in michigan and whether or not that's by shooting firearms more or by getting them involved uh, behind a crossbow or whatnot um that that is my plan is to get them ready for the youth hunt which is like the second week in september every year for white deal deer. So I, I'd like to, uh, you know, Jake hackers inspired me in that regard, you know, with his son, Reed, you know, getting his first deer and a wild boar. <laughs> I mean, the kids, uh, kids, a beast, but that's really inspired me to, uh, you know, put some, get some more time in with my kids. So, uh, that being said, one of the things that I want to do with them is, uh, I want to shoot some 22s some more. I want to get, get into some, you know, get them behind some time behind the scope, just plinking things just, uh, and, uh, we, you know, we got the 22s. I got a 17 HMR. Both of them are perfectly safe and perfectly good, uh, trainer in, uh, learning guns. And, um, I, I think it'll be really cool for both of them to get some trigger time, you know, um, throughout the summer. So, um, that kind of rolls in, that kind of keeps rolling us into, uh, pretty much into the fall. And, um, I don't have any huge major trips. I am going to hunt Ohio this fall. Again, I've mentioned him a bunch, but probably down around the Cincinnati area with Jake Hacker, lots of state land, lots of rolling hills, lots of federal land down there. So, um, I got that trip planned. I also have, of course, the lucky trail trip with, um, and my father-in-law and those guys. And that's one trip that we, I, I'm really, really looking forward to. Uh, last year, that particular hunting trip, I left two days late because my son was sick and had to come home, uh, two days early because my daughter had gotten sick. <laughs> so she had passed it along. And here I am with a cold, you know, podcasting to you guys. But uh, so last year that trip was kind of cut short and I was really dialed in on some hot areas. Now, I didn't necessarily have like the biggest bucks on camera or even like a lot of deer on camera, but the spots were so perfect. It was the first time I had really 
really invested in using like on X and digital scouting and looking at topo maps and pounding on doors. And I really pinpointed that this is the area. Uh, you know, I'm looking at thousands and thousands of acres and I can pick out a two air, air a two acre area to say of all the, of all the spots and this 2000 acres, this spot right here is where the deer pass the most. And I was right because every time I sat there, I was seeing deer. I was on deer. But as soon as I got boots on ground, I could really tell it was the place to be. I don't really foresee any reason why that should change next year. Crop rotation, of course, could be um, maybe a little bit better, but this year the crop was just wheat. So, you know, if he puts beans or corn in next year, I'm thinking my spot that I found, you know, up there in northern Michigan state land is going to be even better. So um, I'm really looking forward to uh, Lucky Trail this year. And, you know, that's about all I have so far. Um, so again, just to kind of look back at what I was talking about, looking forward to the ATA show, looking forward to, you know, getting out and really getting some time behind the compound, getting some time, uh, shooting competitively indoors. And that should lead us right into turkey season where I'll also be hunting and guiding, uh, might even try to slide down to Ohio for a turkey or two. I live pretty close to the border. It's like 40 minutes. So, you know, sliding down there for a hunt isn't that big of a deal. Um, and then more fishing throughout the summer. Uh, I definitely want to get um, my kids out fishing with me a bunch. You know, they're they're pretty into that. And uh, they got fishing poles for Christmas. Yeah, Hunter just walked into my podcast studio here and reminded me of that. So, Santa bring you those fishing poles? No, those are from Santa. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool, huh? So um, that's going to lead right up into my bear hunt, which I am super pumped about. So going to go bear hunting, going to get home from that, a little bit of deep sea fishing down in Myrtle Beach, going to get home from that. And here we go with the youth season, and um, it is time to hunt deer again. And then christmas and then ata again so <laughs> it's a it's a busy life it's a happy life it's a blessed life guys it really is but um gonna cut it short this week uh ata was uh, i'm sure it was amazing the next couple shows are pretty much all going to be focused on uh what's new in 2020 what different companies are coming out with what's exciting what products are coming out, stuff like that. Um, I'm definitely going to do a best of and worst of ATA show. I've always done that in the past. Again, this is just my opinion. Um, what's hot, what's not, stuff like that. And um, after that, we're going to get into a couple other things. I got a couple really good interviews lined up. I'm looking forward to doing them. And one of those interviews that I want to do is with my children. Would that be fun, buddy? Yeah. You want to be on my show? Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll give you guys your own episode where we'll talk about hunting and fishing and what you like to do. Yeah. Sound like a good idea? Yeah. All right. Love you, buddy. Love you. All right. Do you know how we end the show every time? We say, get outdoors. It's a wild place to be. Do you want to say that? Yeah. All right. Why don't you come up here on the microphone and tell everybody how we end the show. Get outdoors. It's a place to be. No, we got to say, get outdoors. It's a wild place to be. Get outdoors. It's a wild place to be. How about read it like this? Get outdoors. It's a wild place to be. Get outdoors. It's a wild place to be. There we go. Train them right. Happy 2020, guys. Thank you for listening to this episode of Hoffman's Hunting Heritage. Get outdoors. It's a wild place to be.